Let me go grab that before it's completely dark and it's dark. Yep, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Ooh. Welcome aboard, Captain. Nice. Love giant creatures that don't attack you. That's the best. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's your boy Lucael, and welcome back to this blind playthrough of Subnautica. So this is episode 2, only the second episode. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the first one. As of the time of recording this, I haven't yet posted the first episode of the channel. I'm going to do that, I think, uh, tomorrow on Patreon. So I don't know what the reception will be like, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the first episode and uh, looking forward to playing some more today. So we are back in this, let's be honest, nightmare scenario of being stranded on an ocean planet. But thankfully we do have a lot of uh, very advanced technology to help us survive, so... So uh, it was a little bit overwhelming in the first episode, like there's a lot to do, there's a lot to think about, but uh, I did have fun with it, and so I really look forward to playing some more today. So without any further ado guys, let's jump, I mean, let's dive right back in. Here we are back in our little ship. So as you may notice, uh, because my camera was blocking all the information in the bottom left of the screen, I have moved my camera up here, and so I look for a way to maybe change the HUD instead, like maybe have these elements up in this corner here. Uh, there was a mod that allowed you to move elements of the interface. Unfortunately, I guess the, either I couldn't figure out how it works or the mod is outdated, but I wasn't able to move the HUD, so instead I'm putting my camera here. Now bear with me, uh, keep in mind this is my first time doing like an overlay of this style, I've never really done that before, so uh, hopefully it looks okay. Uh, I tried to keep it looking kind of like in the theme of Subnautica. If you have any feedback on like the placement of the camera, size, the style, just any of that stuff, uh, I'm open to any feedback so let me know in the comments. But uh, we're gonna try it like this for today at least. Okay, so the last time I played was a week ago, so I'm like a little bit hazy on some of the details. So we have our Sea Glide, some salvage, um, our survival knife, the flashlight, the scanner, the repair tool. This is all stuff that we have down there. Uh, food and water. Okay, so I really wanted to ask you guys this question and uh, I want to hear your opinion about this. So I've mentioned before that like survival type games are not really my thing usually. Uh, I love all the exploration aspects of this game so far. I love reading the lore, I love scanning the creatures, I love like trying to understand more about the planet and the ship that we come from. All of that stuff I really love. The having to make food and water and watching your thirst and hunger level, that's the stuff that I don't really like as much. And so I was kind of debating whether maybe I should like just switch to freedom mode and just focus purely on the exploration. Now I understand that like most uh, Let's Plays on YouTube, they do like the regular normal mode where you have the thirst and the hunger. And like I understand it's kind of part of the preparations when you're going like on a long kind of expedition and stuff like that so it does come into the gameplay but to me it's just kind of like if it was up to me i would definitely play without it and i was really hesitant about it because i don't want everyone to tune into the playthrough see oh he's playing in freedom mode i'm not gonna watch that you know <laughs> so like would you still watch the playthrough even if i was on freedom mode like I, I feel like it doesn't really take away that much from the game Again, when you drink water and you eat food, you're kind of good for like a really long time. So it doesn't even really seem to play that big of a role in the game. It's just kind of like this little added hassle, which I could really do without. So again, I will wait to hear back from you. For now, I'm going to keep it in survival type, but uh, I would kind of like switching back to freedom mode, honestly. So I can drink one of these right now, actually. Uh, speaking of which, see, I don't have any food, so now I'm gonna have to take time, just go and get some food when I could be spending this time, like, exploring, you know? Okay, so the Aurora has already exploded at this point, and to go explore it, I guess we're gonna need, like, the, uh, the radiation suit. So I was trying to make some wiring kits, for which I just need some silver. I can't remember if we found silver already, I'm not sure. Uh, so we're looking for some wiring kits. The radiation suit for which we need a fiber mesh, which I don't know how to do yet. Uh, the rebreather could be useful. And then uh, the air bladder. I could go and get a bladder fish and make this real quick. The air bladder seems really useful to go back to the surface very quickly. And then we're also looking for a way to make a sea moth as well as a, a mobile vehicle bay. But for this, I need to scan some more pieces. And one thing I want to do today is uh, I want to go back to that crashed ship we found down in the water because I noticed while editing that I think there's a section of it that I didn't check. So I wanted to go back and see if like there was something there. 
and I guess we're gonna maybe try and start building our base. Now, I don't know if the base that you build is something that you can move around the world or if you have to like kind of, I guess, make multiple bases as you move further and further into the ocean. I guess for starters, we could build it just around our pod. So yeah, uh, I'm seeing this symbol as if I got like a new message. This is Life Pod 3, uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea glide, so if we're late for the rendezvous, don't panic. Also, don't go home without us. Seriously. Three out. This is another Zero Life Pod. Uploaded to PDA. Oh. Okay, so I guess because we found like this first signal, now they're giving us another signal. Um, okay, yeah, so when it said 100 meter, that was the depth of the life pod. I thought it was the distance, but it's the depth. And this one says shallow, so uh, how far is it? Okay, it's in this direction. 384 meter, that's not that far. And this is a crew that seems to be still alive, so like... Uh, uh, but it's nighttime right now. Ugh. Okay, um... I do want to get a bladder fish if I can. There's one right there. Boop. Boop. And I need some food, so let me like get a boomerang. And uh, okay, I do swim quite a bit faster now thanks to the flippers that we got. So I'm just gonna grab some fish. And then um, I'm gonna make some food. Let's make some uh, also, I'm gonna destroy the salvage I have because that takes a lot of space in your inventory. There we go, and we can stock it too. Uh, I wonder why you can make multiple fins though, because once you have one, you don't really need any more. So I feel like it should maybe tell you like, oh, you already have this equipped, you know, just in case you forget. <laughs> what I need is the air bladder. This is what I want. Okay, uh, deployables, a waterproof locker. Uh, we do still have space in our locker here, so I guess I'm not gonna do that just yet. Let's just make some cooked food. The boomerangs. Also, it could be cool if you uh, could cook multiple fish at a time. Maybe that comes later when you have like a more dedicated like. Uh, oven or something like that. <laughs> right, so get a bunch of titanium now. Let's eat uh, fish. I guess I should have made too many of these cooked fish because they do spoil over time, but like you can find some more pretty easily. Okay, so this is the thing, an air bladder. It does also have some energy. So like I don't know yet how to uh, replenish the charge of a device i'm guessing with a battery but like i don't see any options saying like oh use a battery to yeah i don't know or like is once the maybe once the charge is empty you just need to make another one which would kind of suck i hope it's not like that um uh, let's assign the air bladder to the flare because i'm not i don't think we're going to use the flare so see like our scanner is already kind of running low on energy which sucks i I really wish the devices never ran out of energy, but like I understand why they do. Um, okay, let's make some space by putting all of this... Uh, oh, it's already kind of full though, of all this titanium. Am I really going to need that much titanium? Because <laughs> like, if you need titanium to build something, I'm guessing you need to use regular titanium. You can't use an ingot, but the ingot is useful because it, it allows you to save some space in your inventory. Let's make another ingot, because that'll save us some space, and then maybe we can use the ingots for something later. It gives you three ingots too, so that's pretty good. Okay, let's put that in storage. There we go. So if we need uh, titanium ingots, we can just get them there. I'm just going to put everything in uh, storage. I'm going to keep the nutrient block there as like an emergency thing, just in case eventually I run out of food completely. All right, so the sun is rising. Before I go to this uh, other signal, I want to go back to this one. Let's go back to this other signal. 
And uh, let's see if I missed some stuff. Yeah, hearing a lot of creatures down there, but that's fine. They're kind of worried about their own thing. We're gonna get closer to that uh, reef back, I think it was called. Just this really cool creature. Is it still there? Yes, it is. It's there. I love the reef bag. That's such a cool, uh, really lovely creature. Okay, let's get our scanner out. Go full of air and let's dive down. Okay, so uh, where is the ship? The ship is... Right there, okay. So yeah, in the last episode, I went in that top part, but I didn't go in the bottom part, so I wanted to check if there's actually something there. See, there's like an opening there. Can you maybe go inside? Uh, maybe not. What about under? Anything here? Is there like an opening maybe? Uh, this is just, whoop. This is just metal salvage. Okay, maybe not. Bioreactor, I think I've already got all of that, yeah. Whoa. Hey, let me scan you, buddy. Let me scan you while you're stuck in the thing. <laughs> Sand shark. That's an appropriate name. Oh, it takes a long time to scan, but he's kind of stuck there. Sand shark, look at that. A powerful, medium-sized predator that burrows into the sand and ambushes its prey from below. As with many predators, it may be possible to temporarily distract sand sharks by feeding any hungry specimens that draw close. Forward dorsal fin. The unusual location of this fin suggests a purpose unrelated to movement through the water. It may be employed in shifting sand beneath the surface or in mating rituals, or may simply be an evolu evolutionary dead end. <laughs> um, segmented exoskeleton. Thick armor plating renders the sand shark almost immune to attack from above. Oh, I was almost going to attack it with my knife, but now I see that it would be kind of pointless. While it is capable of impressive acceleration, its exoskeleton prevents it from changing direction quickly. The sand shark is thus a perfectly designed ambush hunter, but ill-suited to sustained pursuits. Kind of like a cat. Uh, Ill-designed for emulation, likely used to disturb the surface of the sand so the life form can burrow into the ground. Avoid be vigilant for ambush in sandy biomes. Okay, well this one's kind of just stuck there, so I don't think it's gonna attack me. Uh, 30 seconds. Oh shit. Okay, let's try our uh, ascend thing. Woo! Hey, that's pretty fast. Oh, it... Okay, I was gonna say it runs out of energy very quickly, but then it does recharge when you reach the, the surface. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I'm gonna need, like, the same device, but to go back down. <laughs> like a way, like a, like a cartoon anvil to bring you back to the depths. Or, like the iron boots and, uh... Okay, I enough time, you know? Okay, so... Oh! Oh, I see you got yourself loose, buddy. Don't attack me, please. I'm just... Yeah, I'm just checking. Uh, okay, so I guess I was wrong. There's nothing really to find here, it seems. No salvage. Yeah, there's no opening, it, I guess, to get inside. So maybe we've already found everything, then. In which case, I guess... Uh, I guess let's go to that other signal. Although, maybe I should stop by the pot again. Not sure. I think we already have everything we need to make that... Uh... What's it called? The Seamoth? I think we already have everything we need for that in storage. Other than maybe some lubricant? Titanium ingot? Okay, I don't have a power cell. But I could make one with the battery. So we could already be making this little Seamoth. But uh, I kind of want to wait maybe until I have like this, uh, the vehicle base so I can anchor it there. A beacon. Okay, so, so the message we got from this life pod, it says pre-recorded message. And when we got there, it was just like cracked and open and no one was in there. So I guess they escaped somewhere else. Either that or they died. But 
we're gonna wish for them that they didn't actually die. But uh, this one, they sounded pretty fine. They said their sea glide was damaged, but they seemed okay. So like, again, and I've asked this before, I really wonder if you're gonna get to actually meet anyone else in this game. Cause like the kind of whole point of it is that you're alone on this ocean planet, right? That's kind of like the main appeal of it. But like, are they gonna subvert my expectations and you actually get to meet other people? I don't know. Um, okay. Um, let's eat this before it goes bad. And let's drink that too. Okay, I'm gonna save even though I didn't really do anything. I think we still have some pretty good daylight, so let's head for that other signal. Life pod 3, Shallows. So this one is life pod 17. Okay, so there's at least 17 life pods. Are we gonna actually find all of them? And uh, we've never headed in this direction so far. So this is like completely unknown territory. There's a stalker there trying to catch a fish. Doesn't seem too uh, interested in us, thankfully. Okay, there's another stalker there. Their seek light damage. Uh, please be okay. Please be okay. Is it gonna be cracked open? Ah, uh, it's cracked open. Shit. I mean, I, sh I shouldn't be surprised, right? All right, let's see what we can find. Maybe we get some clue to their whereabouts. An abandoned PDA. Okay. You really think it'll carry two of us? The irregular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power cell rigged to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? Oh, sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the life pod. You're calm about this. I'm seeing the engineering problem. If I stop seeing the maths, I'll be terrified. Okay. Carry two of us. Regular sea glide. So they escaped in a sea glide then. I guess. Uh, oh. A compass? Wait, what did I just get? A compass? Oh, displays compass heading on the HUD. That sounds pretty useful. Copper wire and a wiring kit. That, that shouldn't be too difficult to make. Uh, that's even something I said in the first episode. I was like, oh, you don't really have like a north or south. Uh, in the HUD, which would be useful. Like your only point of reference is where your pod is, but once we get far away from it, you know. So is that everything there is here? I hear something pretty big outside. It might just be these stalkers. Yeah, I think it's just the stalkers. There's a bunch of them. So is there anything else here? Oh, got a sea glide fragment. But I already have that. Uh, it would be cool when you're about to scan something if it told you like, oh, you already have all of this, so you wouldn't like waste, uh, like fill your inventory with titanium. Let's get some more of this creep vine. We're gonna need it to make some stuff. So, is there maybe other like pieces of their ship that fell down? Have I scanned a hoverfish? You're new. Uh oh. There's a stalker there, so let's try not to, uh... Yep, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm okay, I'm gonna leave you to your business. Don't worry about me. They seem busy mostly hunting smaller fish. I don't think they really, like, want to eat you, but they do kind of attack you so that you get out of their, like, territory. Uh, I'm not really seeing... Like, I'm looking around, I'm not really seeing, like, a big crashed ship or anything around here. Like I did for the other... Yeah, I don't really see anything, so... Hmm. Huh. I guess I'll just head back to my pod. So, I'm not sure what exactly triggered the fact that I got this other radio message. I guess maybe they just come at like regular intervals or like... They have to be dependent on your actions, maybe? 
So like maybe because I found the other PDA after like a set amount of time, they send you another radio signal. So maybe I'm gonna get a new one soon-ish. I'm not sure. Uh, because other than that, you're kind of free to explore anywhere without any real objective. So I think it helps to give you some direction. Uh, okay, so... I'm gonna make some lubricant because I need that for the sea moth. It would be cool if you could fabricate stuff from what you have in storage as well and not just what's currently in your inventory, you know? Uh, okay, let's make a copper wire because we need that for the compass. And I'm guessing the compass is like a permanent upgrade or rather, I guess it's something you can equip yeah, in your inventory. Okay, what else do I need? Max allowed number of Oh, okay, you can't pin any more recipes. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I can get rid of this one. I already have that. I guess I'm not gonna make the... Hmm, should I make the C mod? Now I'm wondering, like, maybe I missed something at that other place. Like, was I supposed to get the full uh, beacon blueprints and the full mobile vehicle bay and, like, grav trap? Or I'm supposed to find them elsewhere? I hope I didn't miss anything. I'm not gonna make the C mod just yet. All right, I do need the habitat builder. For that, I need a computer chip. And to make a computer chip, I need table coral sample. Okay, I'm not sure how to get that because I found some table coral, but I couldn't pick it up. So maybe I need to like chip away at it with my knife. Maybe. Wiring kit, you need silver. Do I have some silver? Uh, No silver. I have salt, lead, quartz. No silver. So I'm gonna put that copper wire there for now. Okay, so... What should be my next, like, objective here? I guess I'm looking for some silver, some table coral, some gold. Um, is there, like, a data entry somewhere that can tell me where to find these things? Geological data? Uh, indigenous life form? There's nothing really about where to find silver and stuff like that. I guess I could just look around. Uh, I know you're more likely to find... ...minerals in, like, tunnels. I was curious also about the radiation from the ship. Like, how close to the ship do I have to be before the radiation starts, like, affecting me? Ooh, giant coral tube. Yay! It's like being at the water park. Um, yeah, should I be getting closer to the ship or am I just gonna take damage from the radiation? So plenty of these friendly little fish. There's a box there. What is that? Mobile vehicle bay. Oh, nice. That's exactly what I need. Now I can make a mobile vehicle bay. Do you have any other of these boxes around here? Oh, yeah, there's a bunch. Uh, nothing in there. That's some salt. Wait, have I not scanned these boxes before? I feel like I was here. I guess I just missed that one. Yeah, I think I was here in the previous episode. I guess I had just missed this one. A lot of stalkers down there. Let's not butter them. What is this? Metal salvage. I'm good. So if you want to find titanium, there's plenty of titanium around. That's not a problem. Uh, oh, there's this little guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. These guys are hard to avoid. But at least we got some cave sulfur. Some copper. Oh! There's another one. Oh! Shit. Okay, you can't really outswim them, it seems. Got more cave sulfur. 
Uh, is it me or your life goes back up by itself? Not sure. Okay, so what do we need for the mobile vehicle bay? Uh, oh, again, not too bad. Titanium ingot, lubricant, power cell. That's not that bad. Uh, for the power cell, you need two batteries, silicone rubber. Okay, I think I can make that. So let's get a couple of these mushrooms. And I think I can make that. Oh, see, we got another radio signal. Okay, I'm not gonna listen to it right away though. I want to, uh... Okay, so... Let's see. Uh, I need two batteries. And then with the two batteries, you can make the power cell. Nice. And then with the power cell, you can make... Uh, okay, I need my titanium ingots, which are in storage. Here we go. Uh, but this thing is huge, so how am I gonna... Let's see. Mobile vehicle bay. Okay, yeah, it's pretty huge. Fabricates vehicles from raw materials. So it's a vehicle fabricator, basically. But it's in my inventory? Can I, like, just drop it here? Release vehicle bay. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, drop. Ooh. Oh. Uh... Release vehicle bay? How do I release it? I guess I have to assign it first. Okay. How do I... Oh! Okay, like this. Now I can climb on it. Okay, okay. Got it. So, vehicle bay. Uh, sea moth. That's kind of like the only one. But that's fine. So, titanium ingot, another power cell, glass, lubricant, lead. I think I can make that already. Uh, let me... I guess these little things are like... Uh, the fabricators. I might need more... More acid mushroom. Let's get a couple more. Alright, so let's see. First of all, I'm gonna put this... Uh, gonna put the scanner back here. Okay. So let's make... Another battery. Another battery. Uh, I need some more silicone. Uh, okay, I'm out of silicone. That's fine. We got some creep vine. All right, here we go. Another power cell. And then glass, titanium ingot, lubricant, and lead. I think I'm out of. S okay, I'm out of creep vine. I'm gonna have to go get some more. Let's get some quartz to make the glass. You need two. Here's the glass. Okay, now all we need is some some more creep vine. Let me go grab that before it's completely dark and it's dark. Um It should be fine, right? Even though it's dark, like I think it's fine. We kind of know what to expect. I don't think we're going to meet any big predators in these shallow waters, so it should be fine. I just need some creep vine real quick. Maybe different fish come out at night. Not sure. Hey. Oh yeah, these like shiny green ones that drop like these... uh. I saw these 
defend themselves against stalkers in the previous episode. Please, no one attack me. I'm just here to get some creep vines. Alright, I'm good. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, I hope you can build like a recharge station maybe to like recharge your tools. I'm hoping that's kind of how it is and that you just don't have to build them over again. That would really suck. All right, so lubricant. And that's it. With that, we can build our sea moth. Let's check it out. Also, I wonder if you can like just pick this back up. Because I don't seem to have an option to just like grab it again. Alright, so here we go. Seamoth. Seamoth is a fast, safe mode of transport. But remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. It's good for my glutes. Look at that. A nice Seamoth. Now that's a full vehicle. Nice. Ooh. Welcome aboard, Captain. Nice! Oh, that's so cool. Uh, okay, it seems like it has a different, like, inventory. Uh, there's a repair level, like a power level, and it tells you the temperature as well. So can I just, like, stay here? Oh, oh I just killed a fish. I hear, like, more reef bags, maybe? But of course I can't like pick up items from this thing, right? Unless uh, maybe I can attach some arms, some like little arms that grab items for you. That would be cool. Listen to that. I could kind of hear like whale songs. Hear that? It should be scary, but it's actually quite beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um. So how fast is this thing gonna run out of power though? Right now it says a hundred, so I'm not sure. So I guess it's just gonna float there, right? Even if I leave far away and I come back, it's still gonna be there. No one's gonna steal my Seamot, I hope. Um, okay, I'm kind of hungry. I'm gonna drop this. I'm gonna drink this. Uh, oh, I'm just gonna drop this. It's gone bad. Let me grab a couple of fish to eat before I go and listen to that other uh, that other signal. Her boomerang, old oh, bladder fish maybe. So yeah, eating and drinking, you know, it's not it's not a big hassle because it doesn't take that long to get some fish. But again, if it doesn't take that long, why even bother having it? You know. It's just kind of annoying to have to always be doing this. I'm gonna cook a peeper. A boomerang. Let's eat those real quick. Yum! Yum! Alright, we're good. Let's listen to this new signal. This is Avery Quinn of Trading Ship Sunbeam. Aurora, do you read? Oh, Over. this is another ship out in space. Nothing but vacuum. These Altera ships. They run low on engine grease, they send an SOS, you offer to help, they don't pick okay, up. Okay, but obviously it crashed. Aurora, I'm out on the far side of the system. It's gonna take more than a week to Okay, they're very far you away. still need our assistance. Over. I'll try them again tomorrow. Damn charter's gonna have us blowing our credits running errands for Altera. See what the long range scans pick up in the meantime. Yeah, I do that. What's happening to my health down there? It was like moving. Is it like going back up over time? Not sure. Uh, okay, so they got our distress signal. And because no one's picking up, they're like, oh, they're too busy. It's like, obviously, if you get a distress signal and no one's picking up, it's because they're like a real emergency. Like, people are in trouble. You should know that. Um, okay, so this one was not another distress signal. So what should we do here? 
I still don't know how to do the fiber mesh. I don't know how to get the silver. Um, I could try and make the compass. But again, I need the silver for that. The table coral. Uh, it would be cool if you could do like in Zelda, where like if you target something in your data log, then it tells you where it is. Like if I marked uh, table coral, then it's like, you can find table coral in this direction, you know? I could just try and look for some. Is this table coral? No, that's just... It is table coral. Okay, what if I hit it with like a knife? Oh, okay, so you... Okay, you can collect it. Right on. So here we have our two that we need. I'm gonna get some more just in case. There we go. Okay, uh, and then what? Some gold and copper. I don't think I've seen gold. Must be down in like the tunnels. Okay, I remember you there. Do you think I can kill this thing before it explodes? I wonder. Let's try it. Nope, he still exploded. Okay, so that didn't work. Uh, the sulfur is not back. I'm like starting to have quite a bit of damage, so I think I might use a health kit. There we go. Right, let's see if we can find any gold in these tunnels, maybe. Uh, what am I hearing? Are you making this sound? This is quartz. Uh, last time I tried going down in these tunnels, I died because I ran out of air. So we're going to try not to do that. Titanium. Probably shouldn't be hitting things with my lamp. That sounds like a good way to break it. Uh, more acid mushrooms. 30 seconds of oxygen. I should, be, I should be going back to the surface. Yes, yes, I know you don't want to be bothered. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Whoop! Oh, this damn thing followed me all the way to the surface. Son of a bitch. Okay, no gold. Where am I gonna find some gold? I guess I'm gonna have to venture further out, right? Unfortunately. Um, got some copper. Always need that. Just a lot of sounds out here. Wait, I think I saw a new fish. That yellow one? That was new, right? I want to scan all the fish. Oh. Ugh, another one of these. Again! Okay, how do you avoid these guys? Like, they always catch up with you. I don't know how to avoid them. I guess I need to like shoot them with something, but I don't have any gun or like projectile. Don't worry about me. Here we got a big tunnel. Big tunnel. There's one right behind me. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Limestone chunk. These guys are freaking everywhere! Oh, hello. What are you? Hello. Friend or foe? A gasopod. Oh, hello. Don't attack me, please. Oh, yeah, they're spreading like these kind of things that probably does some damage, but they don't seem overly hostile. Gasopod, a slow-moving life form in one of the larger herbivores on the planet. Um, I think there's going to be much larger than this. Providing a substantial meal to would-be predators, the gasopod protects its domain by filling the surrounding water with poisonous and corrosive pods whose contents dissolve even synthetic fibers. Filtration system, thick non-reactive skin and multiple gill layers render this creature impervious to the noxious acid clouds it produces. 
a bulbous sac-like appendage on the rear end, a luminescent yellow algae grows inside the sac and produces the poisonous compound, abdominal muscles can contract causing the algae gland to emit the noxious compound into the surrounding water. Capable of powerful movements through the water when moving in small herds, Gasopods appear to be social in nature and may even use their emissions in their relationship rituals. Their audible calls are likely signifiers of nearby threats or food sources. Approach with caution, acidic pods may be retrieved and repurposed. Really? Interesting. Uh, where am I? Is this the same thing that I had scanned all the things? Oh, a graph trap fragment. Hey, graph trap. Nice. Uh, whoa! Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good, sir. Be on with your business. I'm not gonna bother you. <sighs> okay. Uh, ooh, a beacon fragment. Okay, I don't think I've been here, because this is a lot of new stuff. Beacon, nice. Anything else? Uh, what's this? Sea glide, I think I got that already. Let's just get them even though. I'll we'll re-add those. Nothing in this one. Okay, so we got a couple of things. Uh, another beacon fragment. Of course, they give you more than you can, uh, more than you need in case like you miss some of them, which you're bound to miss a bunch of stuff. So they have to give you more. Okay, I'm actually getting pretty far away from my pod here. So I don't know where to find the silver. I've also taken a lot of damage from these damn exploding fish. Uh, I can probably just craft another med kit. How can you craft a med kit? Fiber mesh? I don't know how to make fiber mesh though. Well, that's a problem. Uh, hopefully the health goes back up over time because otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. So yeah, I need, I need some gold. Where can I find gold? I guess let's go back to the ship. Maybe we got a new signal by now. Because otherwise I'm not really sure what to do next. Like, I guess I'm going to have to go out and explore some more. But where? <laughs> like, I don't know in what direction to go. And I don't have a compass. I don't have a radiation suit to go closer to the ship. We do our CMOT. Our CMOT would help us go pretty far away if we want, but like I don't want to get too far away from my pod because like that's my only means of survival. No new signal. That's unfortunate. Kind of need some water. Okay, so what's a beacon? Navigation aid maintains and broadcasts its position. That could definitely be useful. I think I'm going to make that. Because then maybe we can get some answers from other people. Uh, I'm noticing also my pod is losing power. I'm now at 66 out of the 75. Hoverfish. Oh yeah, I didn't read this one. Uh, a small cautious herbivore commonly found in kelp-rich environments. Charged foot pads. Six unique limb appendages feature charged pads capable of ionizing the surrounding water. The hoverfish uses this ability to maintain its position against the current as it feeds from kelp and lichen. And it's edible. Okay, I don't have an entry telling me what the beacon does. So I'm just gonna release one. Let's see. Let's get some water. I kind of wish you could just deploy them without first putting them in your, like, quick slot. There we go. Whoop. So now we're broadcasting, I guess, our position, and I could be picking it up. Oh, I can change the name. Uh, I guess we'll call it Main Pod. Does that do anything? Is that just like to... S oh, maybe it's to see it from far away. 
Oh, yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's so that you can see it. Yeah, okay. So it shows my CMOTH at all times. It shows the beacon at all times. This one, I guess we can turn off. Don't really need that one anymore, nor this one. Uh, don't really need the beacon because like you can already see the life pods. So, but uh, okay. So it's not so much to broadcast to other people. I guess it's more for yourself. Like if you find something interesting, you want to put a beacon so that you don't lose sight of it. Okay, so I guess I'm going to pick that up then. And we're just going to keep that. I just pick it up. Um, well, I'm not really sure what to do. Uh, I don't really have a set objective anymore, so I guess I'm just gonna pick a direction and just go. Let's go, like, just opposite the ship, because, like, if we get close to the ship, I am afraid it's gonna... Welcome aboard, Captain. The radiation's gonna affect us. And let's just see what we can find. Let's just see what we can find. So the ship, the, uh, what's it called? The Altera, the Luna, the... What's the name of the damn ship? The Aurora. I don't know why I kept forgetting the name. So we're gonna go in the opposite direction to the Aurora. And let's just see what we can find. Now let's see how fast this thing runs out of power. And then we're killing a bunch of fish by swimming into them. Sorry about that. Okay, we're at 99. So it goes down. Let's just keep going. Let's see if we can see anything. Let's not go too deep, because, you know, predators. And who knows what else? Sorry to all the fish. 98. So, you know, it goes down. It doesn't go down super quickly. Ow. What the hell is that? Okay, I think that's another reef back. Might be the same. Oh, multiple reef backs. That's like a whole colony of them. Ooh. I'm not seeing like anything really. I love these guys. They're actually quite relaxing because I know they're not going to attack me. Uh, oh. That's another piece of ship down there, but like we're pretty deep down right now. Uh oh, okay. So here we got a piece of ship. Passing 100 meters, oxygen efficiency decreased. Okay, so hmm. let's see what we can find here. Let's be quick. A scanner room fragment. Nice. Our air is going to go down very quickly because we're pretty uh, deep at this point. We're 131 meter down. Ooh, you can get in there. Anything in here? Propulsion cannon. Ooh, that would be nice. Oh, we can already make it. Propulsion cannon allows technicians to manipulate. This music's very ominous. <laughs> Manipulate gravitational forces at ranges of up to 20 meter. Commonly used in construction and mining to move materials. Uh, pull the trigger once to lock onto and attract a single targeted object weighing less than 25 kg. The object can now safely be retrieved from the gravitational beam. Alternatively, pull the trigger a second time to prop hold the object. I could maybe use that against these small fish. Not recommended for use on organic objects. I'm gonna do it on <laughs> organic objects. The prop cannon. Some species are telekinetic. For everyone else, there's ultra. Okay, how difficult is this to make, I wonder? Uh, radiation suit, I'm just gonna keep for later, because I just don't have fiber mesh. So once I have fiber mesh, I can start worrying about that. Uh, propulsion cannon. Okay, I need to get the full thing. And laser cutter as well. So let's just keep scanning. Nothing here. That's strange that the whole HUD disappeared there. That was weird. It's never done that before. Oh, a battery charger. 
I think we definitely need that. Okay, so if I go in my CMOD, sealed door. Oh, cut open to access. Oh, okay, you know what? I'm gonna leave a beacon here, because this is a pretty important discovery, and clearly this is something I'm gonna need to come back to later. So let's actually... Uh, where's that beacon? Here. Let's get the beacon here, and I'm... 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. I need to go back to... What's happening here? The sharks. Where's my thing? It's over there. If I go back in there, is it gonna give me all my oxygen back, you think? It does, okay. Why is this at 93? Is it because I it took damage? Okay, at least it does give me my oxygen back, so that's nice. Let's go back out. I'm sure there's more to scan in there. Uh, can I open this door? Yes, I can. Is this weird how the whole HUD disappears when you open the door? Oh, okay, it just leaves outside. So, there had got to be something important there. Uh, unfortunately, we can't open the door. I'm going to need like the, I'm going to need the laser cutters for that. So we'll have to come back here later when we have the laser cutter. It's got a scanning room fragment. Um, salt, salt, quartz. Okay, so that's about it. Whoa! Give me some distance, buddy. Okay, so we found the locked door. That's something we're gonna have to come back to later. Uh, it is now kind of nighttime. Should I be exploring more? It seems a little bit risky, but we're gonna try. Oh, it's getting really dark now. I don't like this. Ooh, look at that. Oh, beautiful manta rays of some kind. But like, it's really dark now. I don't like this. It's too dark for my taste, so let's go back to the surface a little bit. Oh, let's try not to hit any of these uh, beautiful creatures. They might not like that. Look at that, so majestic. Beautiful. I love that. Love those. Love giant creatures that don't attack you. That's the best. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, I can maybe use the repair tool on the CMOT to repair it. Uh, not seeing anything else. I'm just keeping an eye open, seeing if we can find any other, like... Oh, that always startles me. See if we can find any other debris from the Aurora. These sharks. Uh, it's gonna be like hard, a little bit hard to play this game just because like they need to give you some kind of direction otherwise you can really go like in any direction and it's gonna be really easy to just get lost and like you know what I mean. Like, they do give you the signals from the radio, which is, like, a nice... A nice way to get some direction. Also... Exploring at night is kind of a problem. Of course, you have to work around it. That's kind of inevitable. Like, there's a day-night cycle where it's gonna have to deal with it, but it does get really scary at night. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna have to make more beacons as well, because I just had the one beacon. Alright, let's see if we have another signal, maybe. Oh, we do! Do we? I think we do. Um... Okay, we need to find just one more propulsion cannon to get the blueprint. Uh, do I have any more copper? 
I have just one. I'm just gonna make another beacon in case I find another point of interest. Oh, this is gold. It's not copper. Okay, I don't have any more copper. Wait, is this gold? That means I can make the computer chip. I just need like some... Uh... Yeah, I need copper. Okay, I'll go out and get some copper then. Because then I can make the computer chip. With the computer chip, I can make... Some stuff. I don't remember what exactly. Also, why is my power back at 75? I thought the power of the pod was constantly going down. Isn't it? Am I crazy? This is Officer Keen in Light Pod 19. The captain 19. is gone. I have assumed command. The last thing the captain did was give me coordinates for dry land. We dry land? One and a half kilometers southwest of the crash site. Stay together and good luck. This message will now repeat. Oh. So well, there David is some dry land? Transmission origin coordinates downloaded. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Main pod? Oh, this is the pod I left behind, but I changed the name to main pod. <laughs> I should have changed the name before I left it there. Wait, so... Knife pod 19, that's really far away, dude. 1200 meters, second officer Keen's last broadcast location. So he said they were rendezvousing on dry land. Uh, southwest of the crash site. I mean, this is the crash site. So if I can just get there and then go southwest, I would find mainland or like dry land. I find it hard to believe that there's any dry land on this planet, but then again, I guess it's possible. We're only seeing like a small part of it. Um, okay, let's go find some copper. Uh, actually, my inventory is full. I need to drop some of this. Let's drop this. Okay, let's go find some copper. Uh, it's not usually super hard to find. Uh, copper, anywhere? Copper, please? It's always when you need some that you can't find it. Copper, anywhere, please? Copper, actually, a little bit hard to find. Uh, also, shit, I need to go back to the surface. I need to go back to the surface real quick. Shit. Shit. I'm gonna die if I keep this up. Like, I keep running into these damn fish. I only have like a quarter of my life now. Where are all the copper at? I couldn't find any damn copper. Copper feels like something that should be like pl pretty plentiful because you need it a lot, so... And I think maybe it does not respawn. Is this copper? Ooh, here we go. Copper. Copper. Okay, so these giant like tunnels seem to be good to get some uh, minerals. Get some copper. Nice, okay. So let's go and make a computer chip. So I guess you're better off not cooking uh, the fish until you really need them. Because otherwise they spoil, which you would think it would be the opposite. You would think the fish would spoil faster than the cooked version would, you know? Am I wrong? So... Uh, copper wire? With this we can make a computer chip. Then let's make some water. Let's eat that, drink that. Okay, so now I can make a computer chip. Okay, there it is, computer chip. 
advanced wiring kit. New blueprint acquired. Uh, where is that? Scanner room. Not chip. I need some magnetite. Okay, I don't know how to make that. Uh, camera drone. Yeah. Scanner room range upgrade and scanner room speed upgrade. Okay. Wait, I could make a scanning room, but I need the builder, right? I need the fabricator first. Oh, there it is. Battery charger. Can charge multiple batteries simultaneously. Okay. Medical kit fabricator. It fabricates one every 30 minutes. Wow, that's super useful. But again, need some fiber mesh. I don't know how to make that. Um. Wait, isn't there a... Isn't there one of those here? Yeah. Oh, so I just get one of these every 30 minutes? Oh, that's actually really, really useful. Okay, I didn't know that. I'm glad I figured that out. So then it closes and then... Oh, you can see the percentage. Okay, so that tells you when the next one's gonna be. And then this is just nothing. Okay, okay. The radio I already have. Fabricator I already have. The power cells. So... Oh, now we're back at 58 out of 75. So what makes it so sometimes the power cells go down and sometimes they... Wait, now it's going back up? Okay, maybe I guess using the fabricator uses the power cell. And so that's why it's going down. So eventually I could have run out of power until I let it go back up. Okay, okay. I think I get it. Okay, so now I have a computer chip. I guess I'll put that in there until I can use it. Hmm. So what else did I want to make? Uh, there's like so many of these blueprints. This menu could be a little bit better. Like having to scroll. Oh. Oh, this is here is the advanced wiring kit. CPU use an advanced construction. Okay, well, I'm good for the computer chip. Dehydrating, but keeps well. Okay, so I guess the cured food is food that it dehydrates you, but it lasts for longer. Okay, for the habitat builder, I did need the ship, and then I need the wiring kit and a battery. So the battery is not a problem. In fact, I can make one right now. I have the chip, I just need silver, but I don't know how to get silver though. So uh, I'm gonna have to get to that. Okay, I'm gonna put the battery in storage. I'm gonna save, and then I guess we're gonna go to that new signal that we got. Uh, I wish I could change the name of this, but I guess I'm gonna have to go right next to it before I can do that, right? Welcome oh, let me... Captain. Can I repair that? With my... Repair tool? Yes, you can. Okay. Good. Now it's repaired. Uh, I can't power it back up, though, but... Enter the Seamoth and let's go for LifePod 19. Second Officer Keen's last broadcast. So, I guess this is where the LifePod is, but the whole crew has gone to Dryland. I have a really hard time believing that there's actually Dryland in this game just because it kind of goes against the whole like theme of being on the ocean planet, but maybe there is. Maybe it's gonna surprise me. So, it's pretty far away. It's like a whole minute away. But uh, let's see. Another reef back. Hello, friend. Oh, there's a small one. Uh, it's 300 meters deep, though. I just noticed that. That might be a problem. Like, how deep can this... Uh, can my pod go? Can I go this deep? Also, what kind of predator might be down there? Oh, oh. Okay, let's hope there's no giant predator down there. Warning. Maximum depth reached. Hold oh, shit. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, we're taking damage because we're way too deep right now. 
Uh, okay, I need to try and scan what I can here. Passing 200 meters. Oxygen efficiency greatly decreased. Thermal plant. Let's be quick about this because we can't stay down here for too long. We're too deep right now. We need like a better suit. Uh, ooh, 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 this goes way deep. Okay, quickly, quickly, what else can we find? Anything, anything around here? Moon pool fragment? What the hell is that? A moon pool? Okay, that looks like a game almost. Like some kind of board game. Okay, wait, I already have the moon pool. Okay, let's go back to... Oh shit, my Seamod is kind of like... Thirty Loading up. Biodiversity in this region is unusually low. Cause unusual. Biodiversity is unusually low? What does that mean? That's very worrying that you would say that. Are you seeing that because there's like some kind of predator here killing everything? Is that what you're saying? this no signal yeah, of course uh, modification station okay anything else anything really that's all there is here there's gonna be more sealed door of course I need like some laser cutter to open that um, there's gotta be more Okay, I guess that's all there is. Well, I can't go down to that signal because it's too far down. So it's over there. But it's still pretty far away and it's too deep for me. So that's a big problem. Let's leave then. We'll have to come back here later, once we figure out how to... Um, how to go deeper. We have to go deeper, Leo! What I really need is to find some silver, because then with the silver I could make some uh, mesh kit. With the mesh kit I could make some habitat fabricator. Uh, is this the same one I've been in? There's choirs in the music, I don't really like that. Wait, is this the same one I visited? I think this is a different one. Scanner room fragment, I already have all of those. Can't open the door, sealed door, so another sealed door here. Should I just release another beacon? I don't have another beacon. Okay, I don't have a beacon to mark this one here, but this is yet another place I'm gonna have to return to. Once I can actually get inside. See much fragment, I already have that. This door, can I open that? No? Oh shit. Metal salvage. So nothing much here, really. That's unfortunate. <sighs> and that sucks, like I feel like I'm not making much progress right now. I'm missing a lot of stuff. Would I be safe from the radiation if I stay in the sea moth? Like, could I maybe go to the main ship? I think I'm gonna need the radiation suit. I mean, if I had known it was gonna explode and spread like radiation in the water, I would have gone earlier <laughs> before it exploded, you know? Okay, the sea moth has taken some damage. Uh, I kind of wish you had more quick slots down at the bottom, you know? 
it seems like you don't really have that many. Let's try and repair it. There we go. Uh, do we have a new signal? I do. Alright, let's listen to it. Aurora, this is Sunbeam again. We just picked up a massive debris field at your location. Yep. I didn't know how bad... How many of you... Oh, uh, now he feels bad. I didn't know. For being so dismissive. We're now en route to your location. Okay. We're gonna bring you home. Hey. Sunbeam out. What well, else can I say? The only time I parked a rig this big on a rock that small was in VR. And I blew it. It's a bad option, all right, but so are all the others. Okay. Huh. So, help is coming. Another ship has uh, found our signal and they want to come and help us. However, they're gonna get here and all they're gonna see is this. Which, I guarantee you everyone is dead on this because of the explosion, so like, they're just gonna be like, well, there's no one there, let's just leave. So we definitely need to find some way to contact them and tell them, no, there are still people alive on the planet, but they're kind of like spread all over the place. Uh, ourselves included. Alright, so... I'm not quite sure what to do next, and like, I'm sorry if this playthrough is kind of moving in a snail space, like... <laughs> I guess I should be going out and exploring more to find more stuff, but like... I kind of need like some kind of direction, that's why I love getting these signals, because then that tells me, well, I'm going in this direction, and then I'm gonna check everything I find on my way, but... When I have nowhere to go, there's like almost like too much. You know, I, I know I could go in any direction, but I am limited by my health and my drinking. And see, again, I need to drink. So let's go get some water. This is the stuff I wish I didn't have to do, just getting water all the time. <laughs> Give me a little bladder fish. Um... It's so wild knowing that there's like people out there. There are other survivors, you would think. I mean, it does say pre-recorded messages, so that could be like a day ago. That could be could be like multiple days ago. So they're all people that could have died since. But you would think that there are still people alive somewhere. And it's so it's so strange to think about that. Like here we are stranded, but there are other in our same situation. But we can't get in touch with them. At least not yet. Alright, so again, let's drink, let's eat, let's drink some more, it's a little bit better. Uh, where should I go? What should I do? Like, I can't really go out too far away because as you get further away from the pod, it seems like the depths keep going further and further down, and uh, I don't really have the means to go down in the depths right now. Uh, to make progress, what I need is some silver. Now, where do you find silver? That's kind of like my main... That's my main question here. Where can I find some damn silver? Is it just like in these tunnels, like every other mineral, or is it like maybe further down in the depths? I don't really know. I'm really curious about the Aurora. Like, I wonder how far away it really is. I kind of want to get close to it, but I, I feel like you really can't do that unless you have the radiation suit. So I would probably die, but we could, like, I just saved, so maybe we could... Welcome aboard, Maybe we can test it out. Let's go in that direction and see if we get, like, a message, like, oh, you are being radiation poisoned, like, you need to leave, you need to go far away. Let's see. Ah, here it is, radiation detected, okay. Okay, okay, I gotcha. I'm leaving. I'm leaving, so we need the radiation suit. There's no way around it. <laughs> what the hell was that? Are you guys making that sound? That's a weird ass sound. <laughs> well, there's no way around it. I just need some silver. That's kind of what. Another reef back. Oh, radiation again. So yeah, you really just can't get close to the ship until you have the suit. So I'm just gonna... 
I'm just gonna stop heading in that direction. Let's go in the opposite direction instead. Where the silver at? Where's the silver at? Is it like down here in the depths where the kelp is? Or like the vines are? Protected by these uh these stalkers, maybe? Like is this? Nah. This is just quartz. Like, I'm seeing plenty of quartz, but no silver. Ow. This might be a little too tight for my ship. Taking a lot of unnecessary damage right now. It's fine. Where's the silver? So right now I'm just kind of like going in one direction and hoping to find something, but oh. what is that? Whoa. Uh oh, hello. Hello, you're new. What is this? Okay, well, that's definitely a predator. I can't scan it unless I get close to it. Uh, hmm. You know what? Let's see if I can scan that. What's this? Just salvage? Okay. Uh, again, just salvage. I kind of want to scan that fish, but like, it looks really dangerous. <laughs> and it's pretty big, too. Do I want to risk it? Do I want to risk scanning it? Hello? Hey, buddy. A bone shard. I mean... Uh, he's not like... Uh. Okay, no, he's attacking me. Yep. Bone shard, got you. I got it, buddy. I'll leave you alone. Uh, we get, like, kind of floating little islands there. That's interesting. Could be some silver on there. That would be awesome if you could give me some silver. Uh, ooh, earthen coral tube, okay. Earthen coral tubes, genetic resemblances to the giant coral tubes encountered elsewhere suggest evolutionary divergence approximately 100,000 years ago, with this subspecies being substantially lower in calcium content and specializing in growing in smaller, denser packs at deeper levels. No practical applications discovered. Unfortunate. And then we got the Bone Shark, a large and powerful predator that lives in small groups and fiercely defends its hunting grounds. Thickly armored exoskeletons suggest defensive adaptation either to larger predators or in-species aggression. Marked similarity to the segmented exoskeleton of the Sand Shark, suggesting a relatively recent common ancestor. Yeah. Uh, large eyeballs consistent with high light sensitivity likely for hunting or likely for hunting of luminescent prey in low-light environments. Generally slow and unresponsive as a means of energy conservation, they will act with uncompromising speed and aggression against any threat to their territory. Avoid may be distracted by light sources. Oh. Okay. And then uh, what else do we have up there? A modification station where the standard fabricator atomically rearranges raw materials to form complex devices, the mod station is able to combine complex devices to enhance their function, so you can like upgrade uh, stuff that you already have. Most industrial vessels are fitted with a complement of equipment and modification stations, which enable engineers to adapt their tools on the fly. To conserve hard drive space, the modification station is excluded by default from most personal emergency blueprint libraries, However, extreme environments such as ocean and desert class planets. It would be cool if the team from Subnautica made like a desert game. Could be interesting. May necessitate the adaptation of basic survival tools for unanticipated applications. For this reason, access to mod station is always recommended. And then a moon pool. That is a game, right? No, it's not. The moon pool is an essential module for long-term exploration. Its primary function is a dry dock for a small vehicle such as the Seamoth and Prawn Suit. Okay. A Prawn Suit? Don't know what that is. 
The large central chamber contains a pressurized pool which provides ready access to the surrounding waters and comes as standard with equipment for raising and recharging. Recharging a vehicle, very important. When outfitted with a vehicle modification station, the moon pool can be used to build and equip vehicle upgrades. Hmm. So it's good for one CMOT or brown suit. High power consumption. So it's just like a recharge station, I guess? Thermal plan. The first rule of survival in hostile environment is to work with the resources available. If it's 800 degrees outside and you're in danger of burning to death at any moment, you may as well get some cheap, reliable energy out of it. So it converts heat energy into electricity. Always take thermometer readings before attempting installation. Core mechanisms are housed in a heat-resistant chassis, 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 but are not impervious to extreme temperatures. So if you find a place that's like really hot, you kind of want to drop one of these thermal plants and then it's going to give you some energy, I guess. Okay. So a moon pool. Actually not that difficult to make. You just need some lead lubricant and a titanium ingot. It's a docking bay. Okay. I could try and make that eventually, but I think I'm going to need the fabricator first. Okay. Salt. I don't need salt, I need silver! No silver on these, unfortunately. I am still on the hunt for silver. Erosion patterns on the land masses suspended here suggest they once floated on the surface. Oh, interesting. So we did have some dry land, you're saying. Huh. Uh, what are those? I should turn off my lamp. Oh, there's a bunch of these. Ah, uh oh, yeah, okay, you don't like me being here. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I'm leaving. I'll leave. Uh, okay, now we're getting down into the depths. And who knows what's down there. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage okay. imminent. Oh, oh, my thing's about to get destroyed. Oh, shit. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Damn, I broke it. Fuck. Uh, that's really bad. I should reload. Because I just lost my sea moth. Yeah, I'm gonna reload because I don't want to lose my sea moth. Like, it took a while to build it, so... I don't want to lose it by making a stupid mistake, you know? Like, going too far deep. And uh, I didn't really find that much anyways. I just scanned, like, a coral and that's about it. Welcome aboard, Captain. I need to stop uh, running to stuff. <laughs> so we got these stalkers here. I don't think running into the like, small fish damages your ship, but running into like the bigger ones probably does. Uh. Ooh. How pretty. Can I scan those? Oh, you can't scan them? That's a shame. It's like some regular... Oh, there we go. Violet bow. A new plant? A common luminescent plant which grows in patches on the seabed. Okay, I guess they don't really serve any purpose. Regress shell. The specimen is composed of a complex series of regressing rings connected by tendrils. Okay. Uh, they don't seem to have any purpose though. Okay. Ooh, now we're getting down to like these tunnels. Don't know if I should be here. I do want to scan that though. Can I scan that? A jelly shroom. Ooh. A life form unique to a microcosm located in a cave system deep within the grassy plateau where a high concentration of carnivorous life forms wards off smaller predators. Okay. 
Uh, what predators? Consists of a tough, trunk-like base from which grows a fragile purple membrane. A membrane structure suggests vulner vulnerability to predation, but evidence thereof is lacking. Unknown defensive mechanisms? Possible symbiotic relationship? None identified for the predators. Okay, that's kind of a uh, strange. Um, should I be going deeper here? Ooh, look at this. Wow. Uh, what is that? Snakes? The conditions in this cave support a microcosm of unique, possibly predatory life forms. You don't say. Detecting an artificial structure somewhere in the region. Really? Artificial, you say? Okay, so we got like some weird Warning. snakes. Depth reached. Hull damage imminent. But you said there's... Okay, so these have to be predators, but my ship is taking damage because I'm too deep right now. So I can't really explore this place. Uh, I need to stay above 200 meters. So what do you mean by artificial? Uh, this thing there? Warning. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. What is that there? I want to go, but like I'm gonna take damage if I go too deep, won't I? Oh. Okay, they're going like in and out of these, uh... Okay, let me exit and repair this. I need to repair it. Alright, um... I have to go scan that, but... I'm going... Let's hurry up, try and scan it real quick, and then we'll leave. Because that's a PDA. Okay, let's just leave. I'll take a look at that once I'm in a safer place. Because my oxygen is going away really quick. The music here is really like... It's all like mysterious and shit. Uh, okay, how do I get back to the pod? This direction. Let's try and get out of here without destroying our C-Mod so we can actually look at the PDA we got. Okay, but there's some pretty interesting stuff down here. Ooh. Okay, so... Down there, huh? There's also... Oh, is this the... Wait, which pot is this? It's 17. Oh, okay, so... That's uh, gonna be a good way to find it. It's right next to pot 17, so... If I go down in the caverns next to pot 17, there's like a lot of... Interesting stuff down there. Okay, okay, I'll keep that in mind. But for now, um, okay, let's check what we got for the PDA. What did we get? The gassy survivors. Wait, is this what we just found? User Paul Torgal requested cross-referencing of local environment scans with ideal habitat construction conditions, displaying results. Large subterranean cavern with multiple entrances. Conditions support a unique microcosm of predatory life forms. Minor structural instability in cave walls. Extensive resource deposits. Could mean silver. Average environment safety rating C. Optimal habitat site safety rating B. Uh, site 7 has been selected as the optimal habitat construction site for the following reasons. Close proximity to one of the cave entrances in case of emergency. Medium distance from predatory organisms. Stable foundations on which to build. Ready access to materials. A signal tracking the site has been created. Ooh, okay. Um, modification station. That's the moon pool. Modification station, we've seen these. Thermal plant. Okay, so we have a new signal, you mean? Proposed a gassy habitat. It's 250 meters down, though. So, like, again, I can't really reach that. Uh, where... Is it? Let's give it a different color. 
Let's give it like a green color. It's there. Okay. That's pretty far away. Mm. And it's very far down. But it could mean silver. Oh, it's also close to the ship. If it's too close to the aurora, I'm gonna get the radiation warning. So this might be something I'm meant to go to later. Yeah, I think this might be something that I'm supposed to do later. Um, okay, so... I'm gonna have to stop soon. I feel like I haven't... I'm a little disappointed. I feel like I didn't do enough progress for the episode. Um... Why is there smoke coming out of my pod? That's... Oh, what the hell? What happened here? Why did this get damaged? Why was this damaged? What happened here? That's very strange. Um... Okay, I don't need the health kit just yet, we're fine. So we've got the beacon I placed where I need the laser cutter to open the door. Um, for the laser cutter, I need to find two more, so like it's not impossible. If we keep exploring, we might find some. And then we've got uh, this life pod stranded near a cave system. So it did mention the cave system. So I guess I should have known. Uh, if we go explore the caves, we might find some more stuff, but it is like very far deep. And uh, I don't know if maybe I need like a better suit to resist like bigger depths. I need maybe like a better ship than the sea mod that I currently have. And then there's this... Uh, where's the green signal? Oh, there. Propose the gassy habitat. 250 meters deep. So like how am I gonna get there? Same problem. So I think I will have to stop here for now. I'm sorry if like I didn't make that much progress in today's episode. I definitely made more in the previous one. Yeah, I just, I need silver. That's like my main thing right now. I need silver because I feel like from there I can start making like a lot more things. I could make the habitat fabricator and then like from there I could make a whole bunch more stuff. I also need to figure out how to make the fiber mesh. Actually, you know what? I got the creepvine cluster. I never tried getting just the regular creepvine. I got the message for that. I needed the knife. But I never... I never actually got any. Maybe I should do that. Because what if it's with the vine that you get the fiber mesh? That just occurred to me. Because... Uh, I remember getting that message like, Oh, cut the vines with your knife. But then when I tried doing it, my inventory was full. So what if I can get the fiber mesh? From that. Okay, so it's food. Oh, that's what it is! I can use the creep vine to make fiber mesh. Oh! Oh. Okay, well, that changes everything. Let's drop some of this titanium. Um, okay, well. Then let's get more of this. That means I could make the suit potentially. Right? Okay, okay, okay. Oh. I was just about to stop the episode, but actually, like, it just occurred to me. Because I was like, oh, you know the fiber mesh? I wonder how you make the fiber mesh. And because it's kind of like a basic material, I assume it has to be made with something you have, like, easy access to. And then I remembered the vines. So... Because to make the suit... 
Yeah, fiber mesh and lead. Okay, I can't remember where I found the lead before. Wiring kit. Okay. Oh. Well, just getting the mesh might unlock like a bunch more recipes. I think the lead was just like... I think the lead was just like down in the tunnels. Let's make some... Because like even to make the health kit, you needed fiber mesh. And I was like, how do you get that? Okay, let's go fiber mesh. Let's make a bunch of those. Okay, you can't really make that many because you need two creep vines and they take a lot of space, but... I hope eventually you can have like maybe a backpack or something so that you have a bigger inventory space, but like... I kind of doubt it. Okay, so with the fiber mesh... We could make... The radiation suit if we can just find two leads and then we could go explore closer to the ship. And the rebreather, for which we need a wiring kit, but again, we need the silver for that. Pathfinder tool. Oh, wait, what is that? Deploys holographic pathfinder discs used to map a way back out of caves or hard to navigate spaces. Oh. A pathfinder tool. Interesting. That sounds pretty useful. For that, I would need a copper wire and some creep vines. That's pretty easy to find. So I think we're definitely going to want that tool. I feel like you should have more quick slots, considering the amount of tools you can have. Like, there's so many of them. Graph trap. Uses artificial gravity to attract light objects and small creatures. Okay. Okay, so lead. Let me see if I can find any lead down in the tunnels. I'm going to save. I think that big tunnel maybe had some lead. Is there any lead down here? Just titanium. I uh, don't want to get exploded by these fish. Can I find any lead? Titanium. Where did I find lead before? I can't remember. That's copper. I feel like it was in these tunnels. A brain... Wait, have I scanned this? I never scanned this. Brain coral. A permanent growing colony of microscopic organisms, this coral species is adapted to filter carbon dioxide from the environment, using the carbon to build the colony and expelling the oxygen from specialized exhaust funnels. It is quite hardy, suggesting samples from a mature specimen could be grown artificially. Air tanks are equipped to siphon oxygen from the water where possible. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm still just looking for lead. Leads, find some lead. Metal salvage. Quartz. Quartz. Shit. Oh, silver! And lead. Wait, so you can just find silver like anywhere? Holy shit, we found some. Ah, oh, this damn fish. These damn fish! Okay, I need to get out of here. So you can just find... It's just kind of rare, I guess, but you can just find silver anywhere. Ooh. Well, now we can make... Ooh, hey, we can make a bunch more stuff. Okay, let me first get a first aid kit. I'm thirsty. I need to get some bladder fish to drink. Again, please let me know if you wouldn't mind me, like, playing on freedom mode. <laughs> I would appreciate that. Okay, okay, okay. So, I didn't find that much, unfortunately. I only find, like, a few little bits of it. 
But, uh... Okay, so first some water. First of all, let's drink. Let's eat. Alright, so that's done. Vital now. Okay, so what should be our priority here? Um, the suit? I only have one lead. Okay, so I don't have enough for the suit yet, but I'll, I'm gonna keep looking for some lead. Um, I could make the rebreather. Conserves oxygen when diving deeper. Oh, okay, so I definitely need that. That's so I can dive deeper. Okay, so let's make the rebreather. For that, I'm gonna make a wiring kit. There we go, our first wiring kit. Okay, nice. And then from that, I can make the rebreather. That's gonna be a nice big upgrade. Let's equip that for sure. Oh, okay, it's already equipped by default. I guess what this means is I can go below 200 meters and not take more oxygen than usual. However, my CMOT still won't be able to go further down deep. So I would need to like always be repairing it or like I guess upgrading it so it can dive deeper. Okay, well now that I know I can find silver just everywhere around me, uh, and it's not like in a special place, I guess I'm just gonna keep like farming for silver. Okay, so next time I'm gonna try making the radiation suit, I'm gonna try making the compass, and then uh, also the habitat builder. So yeah, building this stuff is gonna be my objective for the next episode, but for now I'm gonna have to quit because I've been playing for a long time. So you know what, just as I was about to stop playing, thinking, ah, it sucks that I didn't really make that much progress today, I actually did figure out some stuff, fiber mesh, silver, stuff like that. So I'm pretty confident that the next episode we're gonna make even more progress, I'm gonna get to make the radiation suit, uh, habitat builder, and then we can start building our first habitat, get a scanning room. With the radiation suit I can start maybe getting closer to the aurora, it's like, it's such a massive ship. That like I have to imagine you can actually go inside of it maybe there's gonna be some stuff you can get from its wreckage I'm really curious to see kind of how that's handled and then even though our sea moth can go that deep we can go pretty deep so I might try and go down into the depths uh, of that proposed habitat that we found because uh, maybe there's some people there although again I kind of doubt it so this was another really fun episode for me, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Obviously I haven't watched any other Subnautica playthrough, so I don't really know how it compares to like the pace that other players have, like do they progress a lot faster? Or am I progressing at kind of like a normal pace for players, I'm not really sure. Uh, you guys let me know in the comments. But yeah, this was another really enjoyable episode for me, I quite like this game. I feel like we've still only scratched the surface of it too, I'm sure there's so much more to discover. If you would like to get next week's episode a little bit early, don't forget that you can check out my Patreon and get a full week of early access on all of my videos. And also please don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch all the upcoming episodes every Friday. And until next time guys, thank you so much for watching, I had fun playing this, hope you had fun watching it, and I hope to see you next week for some more Subnautica. See y'all. Bye-bye.